headquarters for fashion. It'll be recorded in time that South Africa was the headquarters for the end of apartheid. But worlds and generations will record that Georgia was the headquarters to make America great for the first time. That this is really going to be the land of the free and the home of the brave. And I am so excited that we've got soldiers for the people in John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock who will not be intimidated, will not back down, but will stand up for the people. If you're excited about our candidates, make some noise now. If you want candidates in Washington, D.C., who believe your families need more than $600 to make it, make some noise now. If you want candidates who want to ensure that your parents have access to their medication and that your family has access to health care, would you make some more noise now? If you want candidates who are going to fight for our children to have a world-class education so that they can compete in a global economy, would you make some noise right now? If you don't want to see 87 million people evicted and foreclosed in the incoming months, would you make some noise right now? John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock are our dynamic duo. That Georgia has always birthed world changers. This is the home of Martin Luther King Jr., the home of John Lewis, and now the home of John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock. We are the headquarters for revolutionaries and world changers. If you're excited about it, come on, make some real big noise. Come on. Come on. All of you who have already participated in early voting, can I hear you make some noise if you participated? All of you who are going to get all of your friends and family to go vote, would you please make some noise? All of you who are convinced whether they like it or not, January 5th, there will be a transfer of power. Would you make some noise right now? I'm excited for all of the young people who are out here, all of our young people, all the millennials, all the Gen Zs. No revolution ever takes place without young people. If you see young people standing around you, would you cheer for them real quick? Would you cheer? Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. It is young people who are going to flip this election. Young people who have been standing out in the cold, young people who refuse to be deterred or turned away, young people who are resolved that America can be better than what it is right now. And so today, please, I don't want you all to act like it is a funeral. This is our pre-celebration party because we can't wait till January 6th. But on today, we celebrate in advance because we know what's getting ready to happen on election day. But if you can't wait, let's party like it's 1999. Come on, Georgia, let's get ready. This is going to be the rally that's going to change everything. Now. We only got a couple of rules today. We only have a couple of rules today. You have the right not to remain silent. You got to make noise all evening long. I want all of you to go live on your social media platforms. I want you to please let the whole world know that we are here, that we are galvanized, that our energy has not been sapped, but we are mobilized for the next week because by January 6th, we're going to remember we were in this parking lot and something amazing and incredible happened. Do me a favor, please. I need you to scream all afternoon till you need a pack of halls. Yell until you ain't got no throat left. Clap until your hands turn red. And vote like your life depends on it. John Ossoff, Raphael Warnock, come on, let's turn up. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to lift up the name of Jesus today. Come on. Let's lift up the name of Jesus. Happy New Year to everybody that's watching us this morning. Happy New Year to everybody in the audience today. It's time to
to celebrate Jesus. Listen, this morning, we're going to just take it back just a little bit. We're going to have just a praise party for the Lord today. Can we take it back just a little bit, everybody? Come on. Come on, everybody, clap your hands. We want you to like, we want you to comment, and we want you to share this service. Jesus is in the room today. Do me a favor, type on the screen, Jesus is my help. Come on, everybody. And you can clap those hands on the screen. Put those hands, clap and emotions on the screen. Let's go, come on. Come on, man, let's go.
but I look to the hills for where my help comes from. I know that my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and the earth. I just want you to be able to just lift those hands in your house and I want you to put those hands up emojis on the screen. Just get them all down the screen. Wherever you are, wherever you're streaming from, wherever, whatever part of the world you're streaming from right now, you know God is a keeper. You know God's been good to you. And we're establishing an order for 2021. So Father, we're going to lift up our hands and we'll lift our voices and we'll worship you because you, we know where our strength comes from. Yes, yes, God. Yes, God. Somebody say, Lord, I will lift. Everybody raise it up. Say it. Come on. My eyes, say it. Mine eyes to the hills, to the hills. Knowing my help, Jesus is our help today. for the peace that you give me. Everybody just say, come on. you 
name of Jesus. What an amazing day to be alive. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Yes, it is he who has made us and not we ourselves. It is the first Sunday of a brand new year, which means we've got another chance to do it right. Another time to fulfill our assignment, our destiny, and our call. Literally, you can say, millions didn't make it, but you're one of the ones that did. In route to worship this morning, I discovered that 350,000 people have now died from COVID-19. 350,000 people have died of COVID-19, yet God has spared your life. And for that, I want you to give God praise right now. I want you to thank him that you're breathing on your own, that you're walking on your own, that you're functioning on your own. Come on, give God glory, give him honor, give him praise, and give him thanksgiving. Give glory, Lord. Give glory, Jesus. In our worship encounter, in our worship encounter this morning, we are glad to welcome 20 teachers from DeKalb County. 20 teachers are in the studio with us because we are praying for them, believing that God is going to give a hedge fence of protection. The school board is trying to push our teachers back into full classrooms, risking life and limb. And so today we want to pray for our teachers, pray for our educators, and pray for our students. Would you write the name of an educator you know, a teacher you know, an instructor that you know, a young person who is in school? Write their name now in the chat room. I want to ask all of our teachers, educators, and partners from DeKalb schools, lift up that sign right where you are. <coughs> we want to pray for you. I want those of you who are watching from home, viewing from home, worshiping from home, to stretch your right hand to faith even at that screen, even at that laptop, even at that phone. God, thank you for teachers. I better say it again. Thank you for teachers, for educators, for instructors who have a heart and a passion for the next generation. I pray, dear Lord, that you will awaken the conscience of the school board that they might be arrested to know that they are thrusting these heroes into the line of fire unnecessarily. I pray that before they march back in the school, that you will disrupt the process so that they might be healed and whole in body, in soul, and in mind. God, we give you glory in advance. We don't know how you're going to do it. We just know that you are able to do anything but fail. Wherever they are, whether they are bus drivers, whether they work in the cafeteria, whether they work in special education in sixth grade, in kindergarten, I pray for every principal, for every teacher's assistant. I pray for every PTA, for every parent. I pray that you will, in fact, perform a miracle in our educational system. And those of you that have that kind of faith, give God glory for it now. Give him praise for it. Come on, you gotta do better than that. You gotta magnify him better. Amen. Amen. Come on, give him glory. Give him praise, give him glory, give him honor, give him thanksgiving. As New Birth is the cornerstone for DeKalb County, we thought it appropriate and right to stake, take a moral stand with our teachers. I want to challenge churches and cities from around the country, please make sure that you are covering our teachers no matter where you live, no matter where it is that you worship. For the last couple of months, we've been talking about health care providers being our heroes. I want to tell you that our teachers are heroes as well, and we're grateful for them. Come on, let's give God glory. Isn't it amazing that uh, in the biblical tradition, they called Jesus not pastor. They called him a great teacher. Those of us who are Christians ought to be in the business of making disciples. 
And if we're making disciples, we have to teach people the path of Christ and the way towards compassion. Our great teacher, Jesus Christ, taught us by example the power of sacrifice. And on this, the first Sunday of January, I want to challenge and champion all of you to celebrate the sacred sacrament of communion with us. We're mindful that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. The reality is it's early in the new year and we've sinned already by thought, by word, and by deed. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. I want to ask you, if you would, if you'll find the elements in your home. Some 2,400 people were recipients of our communion receptacles on yesterday. They pulled up and got theirs. I want to invite you every first Saturday before the first Sunday. Uh, We're going to be providing you an opportunity to pull up to the church and receive your communion. They're just symbols. So if you're just getting bread from your kitchen, I want you to do that. Cutting off a piece of that pancake, that waffle, I want you to do that. Going into the cupboard, finding you a potato chip. Going in the oven, pulling out a biscuit, I want you to do that. But I want you to have that right in your hand. I want you to have it in your possession. Because Jesus did the exact same thing. Thank you, sir. He did the exact same thing. He pulled out a loaf of bread. And when he pulled out that loaf of bread, he said to his disciples, this is my body. It's broken for you. My dear friends, I want you to know the only reason why your body is still intact is because his body was broken for you. The only reason why your kidneys are still functioning, your liver is still in compliance, your lungs are still heaving, is because his body was broken for you. Only reason why your blood pressure is under control, the only reason why it is that your lupus has not flared up, the only reason why your child has not had an asthma attack, his body has been broken for you. I want you to take that bread, take that wafer, take that cracker. I want you to lift it above your head. And right in your hand, I want you to break it. I want you to break it. Here it is. Because I need you to be reminded, this is what was supposed to happen to you in 2020. The enemy did everything to break you. He did everything to try to make you snap. Did everything to make you fall into a million tiny pieces. But look at you with your overcoming self. You have made it to 2021. I want you right where you are. Would you please take an eat? Ever so carefully, those of you who received your communion receptacle, I want you to lift it right where it is that you are. He said to his disciples with a flask of wine, here is my blood. It's Sheffy. I can't, you didn't go get nothing yet. Run to the kitchen. Hurry up. You still got time. He said, here's my blood. It is shed for you. I uh, shiver to know that ODs are at an all-time high. That liquor stores are completely out of stock from those who are darkening its doors. It is amazing how many people are finding themselves in a backslidden state from chemical dependency. Those who pre-pandemic were functioning alcoholics. But in the pandemic, they can't hide it. I'm praying that the power of God will break every addiction, every vice, every habit, every weakness, every weight that so easily besets you. I don't want you to become so puffed up that you think that every addiction comes in a vial or a glass. Sometimes it's a person. Sometimes it's a thing. How many times already have you checked your social media? When you woke up this morning, did you pray or did you look for text messages? I'm praying that God is going to break those addictions. For the blood that was shed for sinners like Jamal Harrison Bryant, 
and sinners like you, would you please take and drink? I'm grateful we've got another time to get it right. As often as you do this, you got to do it in remembrance of him. I'm excited it's a new year, but it's still the old you. But things you used to do, you ain't going to do it no more. Places you used to go, you ain't going no more. Hear this, people you used to entertain, you will not hold court with anymore. Get excited because this is your covenant for the next 30 days. And for that, we give God glory. We give him praise. We give him thanksgiving. Would you clap your hands? Would you open up your mouth? Would you celebrate him? Thank you, pastors. I'm mindful that Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice for our redemption, for our salvation. He gave his whole life. And what is required of us what is required of us is that we would give a sacrifice. Not death, but a part of me has got to die. He challenges all of us that we would give 10% of our income into God. I want to challenge you on this, the first Sunday in January, that all of us are going to tithe. I don't care whether it is that you made a million dollars last week or you were just waiting with bated breath for that $600. Whatever it is that God blessed you with this week, I want you to tithe on that. You received that $600, you ought to be giving right now $60. I want every person ought to be uh, sowing, ought to be investing, ought to be giving. Why? Because God loves a, a cheerful giver. I'm beginning a series today entitled I'm working on something our church is working on some things we are the largest land owning black church in America yeah. and I'm believing that God is going to use this property to enhance improve equip and empower an entire city I'm telling you this year get ready because it's going to be construction everywhere yes, it's not for a sanctuary we already got that we can't even use it but there are other areas that God is going to bless us with, and I'm going to be rolling those out. But I need you to help me build. I need you to help me to fortify a city. I need you to help me take away food insecurity. I need you to help me to be a support to teachers in this area. I need you to help me so people are not evicted from their homes. I need you to help me so students can go back to school in the spring. I need you to help me so that God's name might be illumined in the earth. I need you. I don't know what it is that you're waiting for, but I need you to help me. I'm telling you, if we are a tithing church, we don't need gimmicks, yeah. schemes, plots, or ponzies. All we need is obedience. And our obedience is better than sacrifice. I want you to tithe here this not just based off of where it is that you are because you have to understand that tithing is a prophetic demonstration. Come on. I'm giving not just on what I have already received. I am giving, here it is, based off of what I anticipate yeah. receiving. My twins, Angel and Adore, whenever it is that they're called upon uh, to say the grace, here's what they will pray. Lord, thank you for what we are about to receive. I want you to tithe today. I want you to sow today. I want you to give today on what you believe you are about to receive. I want you to share this message, share this video, share this platform, hear this, with innovators, with creators with entrepreneurs, with dreamers. God has given me a message for this month that I believe is going to recalibrate your thinking and redirect your attention and your focus. This is too big of a message just for you. I'm telling you there's somebody else who needs this like oxygen is going to breathe life into their dream. It is going to breathe life into their vision. It's going to breathe life into their idea. Our music ministry is going to prepare our hearts and our minds for the word of God. While they're doing that, here's the only time ever you are allowed to talk in church. I want you to please text somebody, tag somebody, tell somebody. Run over to New Birth. They got a word for your life that's going to change your life.
Come on, let's build it today. We're building something today. We're building our hope. We're building our faith this morning. We're taking it back just a little bit. Come on. Let's go. I need everybody to say, my hope is built. Come on, that's it. Come on, my hope. Say it. Working on something today. Oh, nothing left. Say it. Oh, no. nothing less than Jesus' blood. Say it, y'all. Jesus' blood. blood, blood. And righteousness. Say it. Something. Come on, say it, say it. Oh, oh nothing less than Jesus' blood. Jesus. Jesus' blood and righteousness. Say it. Will you join us and say, I dare not trust? Join us and say it. Sweet. The sweetest springs, hey. The sweet, the 
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I want you right on the screen in this moment to just type out loud, I'm working on something. I want every person who's in this studio sanctuary, shout out loud, I'm working on something. Come on, say it out loud. I'm working on something. I need you to have the kind of faith to believe whatever I'm working on, God is going to bless. Did you hear what I said? Whatever I'm working on, God is going to bless. If we were in a physical space, I'd have you turn to your neighbor. But because we're in a virtual capacity, would you just type it to encourage somebody who's watching? Whatever you are working on, God is going to bless. I believe that. Uh, Through the whole month of January, that's uh, what I'm going to be preaching uh, around, is that uh, I'm working on something that the Bible would give us a blueprint uh, to figure out how it is that you navigate and develop of that which God has conceived in your heart. I want to uh, invite you personally to meet me now in Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. And I want to illuminate verses 13 and 14 of Genesis 6. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood, make rooms in it, and coat it with pitch both inside and out. Make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch both inside and out. I want to uh, preach for a little while uh, today using as a subject hustling backwards. Hustling backwards. Venture capitalist Jan Hamner was quoted as saying the Coronavirus pandemic in many ways is serving as a catalyst to creation. Those who studied business administration are acutely aware that the best and longest lasting companies are set up always in an economic downturn. Take for example, General Motors was founded in 1908 when what economists call the economic crash of panic took place in 1907. Right after that crash is when General Motors was founded. Burger King flipped its first patty in 1953 when many Americans couldn't even eat. CNN had its first broadcast in 1980 when inflation had hit almost 15%. Both Uber and Airbnb began in 2008 in the aftermath of a global financial crisis. The director of the Bipartisan Center in D.C. says, things that are developed in the backdrop of despair are tougher and more nimble because in a recession, you've got to scrape just to survive. There is no financing, and the market is unsure. I'm going to say this to innovators, to dreamers, to creatives, To entrepreneurs, would you lift that hand? I want to speak a blessing not just over you, but over your idea and over your dream. I declare and decree that whatever you initiate in this pandemic will sustain, soar, and be met with success. 
Y'all didn't shout good, so you must not have heard me. I declare and decree whatever you initiate in this pandemic will sustain, it will soar, and it will be met with supernatural success. If you believe it, give him thanksgiving for it even now. The World Bank predicts that the global economy in 2021 will shrink by 5%, which is the worst performance since World War II in 1946. The Bank of England is steadying itself for the sharpest downturn since 1706, which was 314 years ago. In spite of all that, there has been, I want you to write this down, a 21% increase in applications for new businesses. In the pandemic, a 21% increase for applications to start up new businesses. Dr. Robert Fairley from the University of California in Santa Cruz calls this, I want you to hear it, I want you to internalize it, I want you to remember it. He calls this necessity entrepreneurship. Necessity entrepreneurship. In other words, I've got to do this. I feel like that's rumbling in some of your souls and spirits right now if that's you I'm not asking the whole room to do it I'm not asking everybody who's online but if you just felt something ignited in your spirit would you just declare out loud I've got to do this the stimulus is insufficient my place in the company hear this is insecure my income is inadequate Two years ago, if you would have asked me about it, it would have been a luxury for my spare time. But now I've got to do it because it is a necessity for my survival. Before, I was just thinking about it. But now I am arrested with the understanding I've got to do this. In Genesis chapter 6, we find a man by the name of Noah who has been placed under duress. He's upright. He's devout. But the earth is filled with corruption and violence. The Bible says everybody, here it is, except Noah was evil. And here's what they never told us, never explained to us. Can you imagine this? I got to give it to you. I hope you don't jump out of your pajamas. That God had to change the world because he didn't like who was around Noah. <laughs> Did y'all hear what I just said? He shifted everything because he didn't like who he had to work with. He didn't like who he lived around. He didn't like who was going to be close to his children. So God had to send a deluge of water and rain just to clear out Noah's environment. God is getting ready to do some things to get you away from people. Get you away from situations. Get you away from circumstances. And to get you away from places of employment. He says, I need you to do something, and what I am calling you to do is a necessity. Because if you don't do it, you won't survive. I hope you can hear what I am saying to you. If you don't do this, you are not going to make it. If you don't follow what God is calling for you to do in this moment, not just you, your whole family is going down. He says, I need you to do something. All the more, I need you to build something. For you to survive, Noah, for you to survive, you cannot go into something that already exists. For you to make it, you can't wait for somebody else to do it for you. You are going to have to create your escape. 
The Lord tells him to build this ark. But I want you to hear what the Lord tells him in specificity. He says, build it out of gopher wood. Read it in the King James Version. The New International Version that I've read from you, uh, for you this morning reads from uh, uh, this vantage point that the Lord told him to build it from cypress wood. That's not what God said in the original text. He tells him to build it out of gopher wood. The reason why this is a problem is outside of Genesis 6, you can find gopher wood nowhere. Go to the Discover Channel. Go to National Geographic. Go to Google. They can't find gopher wood. Gopher wood is only in one chapter. In the New International Version that I read from, they put cypress wood because here it is, Noah was from the Middle East and cypress trees were in abundance. But that is not what God told them. Huh. The problem you are getting ready to have is what you are getting ready to build with, people can't identify. What you're getting ready to build with, people have nothing to compare it to. Some will call it the it factor. Others will call it mojo. Others will call it intelligence. Others will call it the magic touch. Others will think it's because of degrees. Others will think because of beauty. Others will think because of connection. Others will believe it's because of affiliation. But what you are building with, secular people won't recognize. You are getting ready to build with the anointing. What it is that God is calling you to do it. You haven't been trained in it. You have no formal education. You've got no mentor, no tutor, no book is showing you how to do it. You ain't learning this on YouTube. You are anointed for what you're getting ready to work on. God builds in Noah the entrepreneurial instinct. Build with something you can't find. Build with something that other people can't locate. Build with something that people will believe you are making up. He gives him the dimensions of the ship. But there's something that threw me off once I got into the bowels of the ship and began to do an autopsy on the craft. I noticed something my Sunday school teacher never told me. My pastors never told me. And uh, my seminary professors never informed me. It's getting ready to blow your mind. I hope you can handle it. He told Noah, build the ark. Hear this, entrepreneurs. But never told him to build a steering wheel. God, help me. He says, I need you to build it. Hear this. And just float. I'm telling you, when you are trusting God, God will not give you specific directions. He just wants to see where you float with him. Say, God, wherever you take me, that's where I'm going to go. Where, where you lead me, I will follow. And I feel like there are 500 of you who can't even fight back the tears. Why? Because in the pandemic, watch what God did. He floated your rent. Look what he did. He floated your car payments. Look what he did. He floated your insurance. And you still got the buoyancy to be able to keep your head adrift while others are losing theirs. He said, will you float with me? Noah's Ark has no steering wheel. The other thing that I find absolutely mind-blowing I know you're looking at your Bible. Look at it again. Not only does God not give him directions for a steering wheel, I hope you'll appreciate this. God never shows or tells him to build an anchor. In other words, I'm going to make you float, but I will not give you the ability to stop. Hallelujah. There are those of you who just keep going. People get tired watching you. But they have no idea I come with no brakes. There is nothing that will allow me to slow down. There are people who don't want what I want, who don't dream the way I dream, who don't have the drive I drive. God says, Noah, you don't need an anchor. Watch this, because when you stop, you've arrived. That's what I want you to have for your spirit. That when I stop, that means I'm there. 
When I stop, it means it's finished. When I stop, it means it has been completed. Look at Genesis chapter 6. I want you to hunker down at verse number 14. The Lord says to him, use a pitch. I want you to use pitch on the inside of the ark. But not only on the inside of the ark, I want you to use pitch on the outside of the ark. Pastor, what is pitch? Pitch is a, a resinous material. It is used to prevent decay. But it is also, hear this, to ensure waterproofing. The Lord says to Noah, when you build this ark, I want you to put pitch on it so it doesn't, it doesn't get corroded because of the water, because of the elements. And I don't want the wood to decay. He said, hear this, I want you to put it on the outside. That makes sense to me. And then he says, put it on the inside. Why do I need the inside of the ship waterproof? He says, Jamal, I need you to tell the people who are going to listen to you preach today. That so many of them have cemented their outside appearance. But their inside is what's falling apart. Man looks at the outer appearance, but it's God that looks at the heart. David said, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Don't you let these church people fool you. A whole lot of them look good on the outside, but on the inside they're depressed and angry and frustrated and suicidal. God said in 2021, you are not going to die from in eternal bleeding. I am not going to let you self implode. I am not going to let you be miserable and unhappy. I'm going to do something on the inside of you. It took 120 years to finish the ark. 120 years to finish the ark. And um, he had to keep putting pitch on it so that the wood would not erode. An amazing thing that happened when Noah got this call. He's 400. When he's finished, he's 600. An amazing thing happened when he was called, had no kids. God help me. When he finished, he got grown kids who were married. Some of you are missing it. Your dream is not forfeited because of your age. God is getting ready to help somebody and ten of y'all ought to be kicking over chairs. He says, I'm going to bless you with grown children. I'm going to bless you in the hour you thought you were supposed to retire. I'm going to bless you when you thought your most productive years were behind you. I'm going to bless you and you will not die until your children see your dream. He said, I need you to keep working on it. And I ain't going to let none of it fall apart. I'm not going to let you lose a step. I'm not going to let you become weak in your extremities. You are going to be productive even when you thought you were finished. I got to say this to somebody. The text tells us about Noah, that he's righteous, he's devout, he's holy. But the Bible fails to give me Noah's work experience. <laughs> Noah comes with no references. All I know is that he served God. God help me. And when he served God, he becomes faithful in other areas. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. I don't know how you ain't celebrating today. God said, because you have been faithful to me. I don't know how many of y'all can handle it. It's some stuff I owe you. The anointing of Joshua is on your life. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon. I'm about to give it to you because you were faithful when you couldn't see me. The boat is, um, the boat, the ark, the ship. 
measures at 512 feet. To understand the magnitude of that ship, 512 feet. I don't know whether you know it or not, but um, no ship was built that large until the 19th century. 512 feet. This is Genesis 6. And no ship is built that large until the 19th century. Pastor, you got me sitting up now. What are you saying to me? I'm telling you that after Noah built the ark, the only ship that was built that large was the Titanic. God, help me in here. Whenever you're doing something for God, hallelujah, whoever thinks they are in competition with you is going to sink. Whoever thinks that they can do what you're doing, they will not stay afloat. Whoever it is that in their minds they deserve to be further ahead, tell them, pull out the violins. Because you're getting ready to go down if you think you are getting ready to eclipse the call that's on my life. God told me he's signing your permission slip. He wants you to dream so big that it scares you. He wants you to dream so big that you can't sleep at night. He wants you to dream so big that the person behind you has got to honk their horn because you don't know the light has changed. He needs you to dream so big that you become irritable when people bring you small, mundane, and insignificant things. He needs you to dream so big that you get frustrated because you know you deserve more than where you are. He wants you to dream so big that insecure people that don't know you don't like you. He wants you to dream so big that you are intimidated by your own limited capacity. He wants you to dream so big that you know if God don't get involved, there's no way that this is going to work. I'm talking to somebody that's got a dream so big that God, if you ever get this off the ground, no devil in hell will be able to stop. The ark is 512 feet. The ratio, the length, and the width of the boat is 30 by 5 by 3. The length, the width, the height of the boat is 30 by 5 by 3. Modern day engineers argue that a boat that size at 30 by 5 by 3, here's what modern day engineers say. It is virtually impossible for that boat to capsize. The dimensions were perfect. That no matter what happened, it wasn't going to flip over. Some of you just missed it. God told me to tell you he has given you the perfect balance. That no matter what waves come against you. You are not going to flip out. You are not going to lose your mind. You are not going to go crazy. You are not going to reduce yourself. You are perfectly equipped for what God has given you. So Jamal, please tell the people of God that you got to build so big that it does not just transport you. It doesn't just save you. You got to dream at a place, dream at a capacity, dream at a level. Here it is, that it'll save your whole family. He put a party of eight on the boat. Him, his wife, his sons, his daughters-in-law. I don't know how many of you all will receive it. But God said, the dream I've given you, the idea I've given you, the business I've given you, the concept I've given you, hear this, your whole family is going to eat off this. Every person connected to you is going to find survivability. Some of y'all don't know when to shout. I got no scriptural evidence that Noah's wife is righteous. 
I got no scriptural evidence that Noah's sons are intercessors. I've got no scriptural evidence that the daughter-in-laws are worshipers. But Noah's got enough oil on his life that his whole family gets redeemed. And I need somebody to give God glory. Lord, this year, you ain't got to make me rich. This year, you ain't got to make me famous. But if you could deliver my family, if you could set my family free, if, if you can make my family drug free and out of jail, I'll give you glory. I want you real quick. Whatever family members you want to see saved this year, write their name on the screen. Whatever family members you want to see off drugs, put it on the screen. Family members you want out of jail, put it on the screen. Family members who need an awakening of their mind, put it on the screen. Noah then built the ark. Took him 120 years. I didn't mean to keep you this long. Hi, y'all. After he built it and it took that long, do you know what Noah had to do? He had to wait for rain. God help me. He did everything God told him to do and then had to wait. Lost friends had to wait. Family members questioned him, had to wait. Help a clear, open prayer line to heaven and still had to wait for the rain. I see you. All I wanted to tell you is I uh, had to prepare you for what's getting ready to happen. Because now the assignment that has God given to you is not the assignment of Noah. Pastor, I'm lost on what you're saying. God said, Jamal, tell the people of God it's going to be strange. But this is the year they're going to have to hustle backwards. I said, what do you mean, God? He said, Noah had to wait for rain. But anybody who can hear your voice, they had the flood in 2020. 2021 is where you build the ark after it's flooded. This is for somebody who needs to know. You done lost everything. You almost lost your mind, lost your family, lost your self-esteem, lost your relationship with God. But God said, hustle backwards. Now that it's flooded, will you still build? Now that you done seen family float away from you, will you still build? Now that you done lost your job, will you still build? Now that they done lowered your stimulus check, will you still build? I feel like preaching to somebody. God said, I need you to know that that's the only way you are going backwards. But God said this year, forgetting those things which are behind, I press toward the mark of the high calling. I ain't never going back to being that lonely. I ain't never going back to being that unhappy. I ain't never going back to people that didn't appreciate me. I gotta go forward. I gotta go forward. I gotta go forward. I gotta go forward. Hallelujah. Lift up that hand. God said you gonna hustle backwards while he's pushing you forward. You get ready to go into things that eyes have not seen. You get ready to hear what ears have not heard. This is getting ready to be the best season of your life. Nothing is going to look familiar because it will not remind you of your old stuff. But you getting ready to step into new beginnings. You getting ready to step into new anointing. You getting ready to step in the new doors. Let God arise. Hey. Let God arise. Hey. Let God arise. Let my enemies be scattered. Let God arise. Hey. Let God arise. Hey. Let God arise. Let my enemies be scattered. 
Let God rise. Let God rise. Let God rise. Let God rise. Let God to lift up that hand. Hallelujah. You are about to go forward. You're about to move into a new place, new territory, a new season. You're getting ready to move into a new you. I'm excited. 2020 was the year of the flood. And so many people drowned in mundane. They drowned in the status quo. They drowned in the average. But you ain't never seen nobody build an ark in a flood. But that's you. Did you hear what I just said? You have never seen anybody build an ark in a flood. But that's what God is calling you to do. I said this morning an amazing thing, softly minstrels. Do you not realize a butterfly has never seen its wings. Butterflies never seen its wings. It doesn't even know how it's getting off the ground. It doesn't even know how it is that it's moving at that level of speed. Has no idea, here it is, how it has moved past people it used to crawl with. Because it can't see its wings. Doesn't even understand there is something in them that projects him away from his past, away from previous people, and away from former relationships. You got wings, you just can't even see them. It's something on you that you can't even identify. You done escaped some stuff that you to this day don't know how you got out of it because you had a wing pack on you. that God kept elevating you and you were fluttering your way to survival by the hand and by the grace of God. I want you to fly your way into the new birth family. I want you to be a member of this church. I want you to be connected to our community, to our family, to our circle. I want you to know that new birth is a church of innovators. It's a church of dreamers, a ch church of creatives, a church of entrepreneurs, and might I say, a church of survivors. People who go to new birth have learned how to build in a flood learn how to build here it is when they lost everything learn how to rebuild when all was lost here's the test that many people miss God was testing Noah hear this if you can't build the ark how are you going to build a new world I better say it again if you can't build the ark how are you going to build a new world when Noah gets off the ship there is nothing and he's got to rebuild. The ark was the test. I'm telling you right now that there are several different streams of income you're going to have to have. Several different revenues, several different vistas. The main thing is not the main thing. Before the pandemic, I was an avid moviegoer. I'm telling you, there was not a week that I wasn't in a movie theater pre-pandemic. Then I found this out. Y'all ain't going to believe it. That movies, here it is only make their money through concessions not from the movie it is not the ticket that pays the bill it's the popcorn oh, y'all just missed what I just said God says what people think is your main thing is just going to be your side thing there's something else that God's getting ready to do in you and you've got to be prepared and equipped to do it Hear me quickly, hear me very carefully. People don't understand all of the different facets that make our church viable for what it does. 
This is not a Sunday church. This is a Monday through Saturday church. I mean, every day we are working, we are building, we are developing. God just put in my spirit, I'm working on something. I'm working on something for you. You're not a member of this church? Join a church that's going to help you build. Join a church, here it is, that's going to help you float. Join a church that will not let you stop until you get to where you're supposed to be. Help me, friends, family, wherever it is that you are. Our volunteers food bank is on hiatus for the month of January. We come back in February. In the middle of the pandemic, we fed a half million people right outside our church. Y'all ought to be clapping over that. A half million people. I'm working on something. God gave me an idea, gave me a vision. I want to share it with you in part. There are nursing homes, senior facilities all over the country. And what I found out, here it is, that these facilities and these developers have no idea of the nuance of black family life. That in these senior care centers, these senior facilities, no grandparents can have custody of their grandchildren. Do you know how many multi-generational families are living under the same roof? God's given me a vision that on this campus, we'll be able to develop that kind of a facility. I want to make sure that all of the health needs of our community are met right here on our campus. COVID-19 did not cause a health crisis. It exposed it. But we ought to have doctors we can trust. Pharmacists who don't just see us as a number. And I want it on this campus. I'm working on something. Do you not know a year ago, we didn't have a garden on this property. On this campus, we now have one. It's in full bloom. Okra and squash, turnip greens growing right on our campus for those in the community who are dealing with food insecurity. I'm working on something, and I want you to be a part of it. Those of you who can hear my voice, I got to say this to you. God told Noah to build the ark, but never told Noah how much it was going to cost. Whenever God gives you a vision, don't you worry about the finance. That's God's job. He never gives vision without provision. Those of you, here it is. I want you to sow into your idea. Sow into your entrepreneurship plan. Show, show, sow into your concept. I want you to get a gift as close to 100 as you possibly can. You don't have 100, get 99. But I want you to get your best gift. I want to be my first investor what it is that God is calling me to do. I believe in the vision. I believe in the plan. I believe in the concept. If nobody else does, if the bank don't see it, God sees it. I want you to sow right now a hundred, as many of you who possibly can and will, I want you to trust God for it. It is my privilege to be able to speak benediction over your life. This blessing is going to cover you for 2021. Do me a favor, repeat after me. Walk with God, and he'll walk with me. Talk with God, and he'll talk with me. Listen to God, and he'll listen to me. Love God, because he first loved me. From your living room, from your bed, if you're driving, just lift one hand up. Otherwise, lift both of your hands. Now unto him who's absolutely able to do anything but fail. May God make you sleepless until you help somebody. May God make you restless until you help yourself. May God irritate you until you have enough sense to worship Him. And may God bless you until you have to give stuff away. Henceforth, now and forevermore, the blessed people of God said, Amen. On Tuesday, join me at 7.30. I'm going to be talking about generational wealth, the gift that was given to Jesus of myrrh. I know y'all thought I forgot it, but I'm bringing it. I need you to have it. Stay tuned for our virtual announcements. If nobody has told you yet, I want you to know your pastor loves you. I'm rocking with you because I know you're working on something. Happy New Year, new birth. It's time.
for your video announcements. We want you to save the day. Three big nights, Tuesday, January 12th through the 14th. It's our New Year's Revival featuring Pastor Jonathan Miller. Get ready for Dr. Yvonne Capehart and Bishop Rudolph McKenzie Jr. But that's not all. Get ready for special musical guests. None other than Bishop Hezekiah Walker, Corinne Hawthorne, and Jonathan McReynolds. Invite your family and friends to this life-changing event. And don't forget, our King's Table will be closed now through January 30th and will resume Saturday, February 6th. If you're in need of groceries, please contact the Atlanta Community Food Bank at acfb.org or text Find Food to 888-976-2232. We'll see you at the King's Table. So as my bank account dwindled down to zero, many of my biggest fears about leaving Google were coming true. Many of us have decisions to make. I didn't know how I was going to pay the rent in two weeks. Find out how to make the pivot. It's the January Book of the Month by Jenny Blake. At that point, the question is not, what do you do if you knew you couldn't fail? But what do you do when your back is up against the wall? It's available now at the Call to Conquer bookstore. And you can purchase the entire list at a discounted price. We'll see you at Call to Conquer. Hey, 